Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, setting your amplifier without buying fancy tools that don't really do anything more than a digital multimeter. So, what we're going to do is connect the DMM uh, to the output terminals of the amplifiers. We're not going to have anything connected to it speaker-wise. Uh, you can do this with everything disconnected, which if you're trying to keep noise down works. You can do it with a speaker connected as well if you'd like. But uh, you can see our connections here. We are using Sundown Audio cable uh, that is available on our store, as well as Sundown Audio RCAs. Highly recommended to keep the noise away, secure connections, that kind of stuff. Excellent RCAs, excellent value. You can pick those up on the store at uh, emfcaraudio.com. So here we have our DMM. It is set to AC voltage. AC voltage is what amplifiers put out. So we're going to use a Sundown Audio SAX 50.4. This amplifier can do high pass, low pass, and full range. And uh, we have a times 10 and times 1 multiplier, so you can also use this on uh, an active component setup. This is not a current model. It has been replaced. Uh, but we do have all of the full line of Sundown Audio amplifiers on our store as well. So what we're going to look at is the adjustments. Now the gain, we're not going to touch that just yet. But what we're going to look at first is setting the crossover for high pass. Um, step one is going to be giving it some volume. So when we roll up on volume, you'll see our voltage goes up. And when it drops, it's at a track change, uh, which you can't hear because we don't have a speaker connected. So right now we've got 14.43 volts of output. That's never going to change as long as we don't touch that volume. So right now, the high pass frequency is set to 50 hertz. It is all the way down. If we go up on the frequency, keep in mind that's going to stay 14.43 volts. We go up on the frequency, all of a sudden it's going to fall off. When it starts to fall off, you've gotten to that frequency. So this is set at 65 hertz. Currently, we're set higher than 65 hertz. So if we back that off until the point that it goes to 14.4 volts again, I'm just barely, barely moving this to get it very precise. And there you go. That is 65 hertz. And I can show this again if we go up just a little bit. That voltage is going to drop off. So we're just a hair above 65 hertz. And this works at any frequency. So we'll go up to 72 hertz. A little bit obscure, but we'll try that. So if you notice with it all the way down, we have 15 volts. And interesting enough, I did not change the volume. That small difference is either going to be the recording volume, maybe something with the head unit. But we know all the way down is 15.0 volts. I got to a point where it's 14.8. I back that off just a hair. And now we're set to 72 hertz. So you don't have to have any fancy tools to do this. You don't have to buy any of the tools that are offered by a particular place that are very expensive and do this same thing. Uh, you can just do it with the DMM, something you probably already have. So the same thing will work for low pass. So now we're going to move on to setting a low pass. I've got the frequency set at 70 hertz. We're going to go to low pass on the amplifier, and our low pass adjustment is over here. Currently, it's at 500 hertz. So we're going to get to the point where we need to be at 70. We're going to get the voltage to a nice, easy figure. So 13.2 volts, we'll say, is our target. And it's going to stay at 13.2 as we turn this knob
and you can see the number is suddenly falling off. So there does seem to be a spot where voltage changes in this knob just a little bit, 0.1 volts. And then it rolls back down to 13.2. Right about there. So that is going to be our 70 hertz mark right there in the middle. If we go down any further, it starts cutting voltage. So that means we're filtering below 70 hertz. So when we're playing 70 hertz, that it's not a brick wall, it's just gonna fall off. Uh, there is a bit of a curve to that. But we can go back up to where it's not filtering that. And there we go. That is our 70 hertz. The same thing will apply for subsonic. So now we're going to look at subsonic. Everything works the same way. A subsonic filter is just a typically low frequency high pass filter is the best way to look at that. So we've got our head unit set to 25 hertz, like we're going to use it on a sub setup. And our subsonic adjustment is here. Currently it is set to 10 hertz. So if we'll give it some volume. We'll go up to 13.5 uh, volts in this example. We'll turn the knob. And as soon as we start losing right about there, we've hit 25 hertz. If we keep going, you're going to see a steady drop. And because it's not a brick wall, the further you go with it, the more it drops off. So we'll go all the way back down again. See we're at 13.5 volts. Turn it until it starts to drop. And there you go, 25 hertz. So now using just a DMM, we can set high pass, low pass, and subsonic without using any other tool than a digital multimeter that you already have. The quality of the meter doesn't even matter. As long as you're showing a voltage, you can see the change in voltage, you can set these settings without using any other tools. If you like this video and found it informative, give us a thumbs up, comment below on any suggestions you have for future videos, hit subscribe right there if you haven't already, and don't forget to go to our website, www.emfcaraudio, to pick up these RCAs, amplifiers from Sundown Audio, Sundown Audio Wire, any of the EMF branded subwoofers, amplifiers, everything, excess power, uh, SBC for the cock boxes for RCA distribution. Uh, share this video if somebody else needs to see how you can set these things without buying other tools. Just use your DMM. Hit the notification bell so you get notified for all new Tech Stuff Tuesday videos and I'll see you next Tuesday.